Hi, I'm Don Keller. I'm a partner in the Oric Menlo Park Emerging Companies Group, and I'm here today with Roman Stanek, the CEO and founder of Good Data, uh, which is a company in the big data space and is doing very, very well with uh, some great prospects. Uh, Roman, welcome. Thank you. Uh, tell us about your product and your Bashes solution in particular. It looks like you've just uh, come out with that in particular? Uh, absolutely. So we just launched a, a new product packaging and set of new products. Uh, we call that uh, set of products big, uh, business data monetization. Um, I will tell you why, but uh, the way it actually manifests to the customers and users is through business mashups, and we call them bashes. And uh, the reason why we call them bashes is that everybody seems to have a, a, a set of applications, apps, and apps are you know, 99 cents, and we didn't want to sound like a cheap product, so we came up with more enterprises sounding product, so that's why Bash. And um, the Bashes are complete solutions for uh, sales, marketing, HR, customer success, finance, uh, any, any sort of business activity that companies do, we expect to have Bash to be built by either Good Data or one of our partners. And do you customize them for, Absolutely. Each, for each client? Yeah, yes, that's, that's, the, that's the thing. Uh, Every company is different. There's no one-size-fits solution. Every company has slightly different business pro business process. You look at companies; um, they have different set of set of self stages or, or managements. They make decisions uh, differently. We say that companies compete compete on analytics. So Bash is more as of a starting point, but it's a, a 80 percent of what companies needs to actually analyze data. And would you describe the product that you've introduced as revolutionary? Is it evolutionary? Is it, uh, is it leapfrogging the competition? It, or what? It, it's, it's interesting. When, you actually, when I say that it's analytics and it does you know, out, of the box, out of the box analytics for some business process, I know it sounds evolutionary. It's like, well, you know, we've heard about that for the last 20 or 50 years. But when you actually look at the fact it actually works and the fact that people can use it and it takes uh, and it takes a couple of days to set up and get into production, and you compare it with you know, the classical BI or data warehouse or the old right. enterprise style of analytics that takes 18 months, and, uh, and it's extremely risky, and, and, and people still don't get what is in Bash, that, then you would actually say it's very revolutionary. That's great. Now, Splunk is in your space and went public, and they're getting a lot of publicity. Mm -hmm. How would you compare yourselves to them? Uh, Splunk is in our space only if you define our space as data. If you look at, if you, look at you know, the, the fact that data has so many facets, that there is business data and genetics data and there is structured data and unstructured data and uh, data that's being produced by machine and data that's being produced by, by people and so on, then, and, and, and it's, it's enormous market of, you know, a hundred billion dollars. So if, if, once we look at data, at those many facets, then you will see that uh, Splunk has a healthy market in analytics of, of technical data or te uh, data produced by machines, mostly log files, and we are big users of Splunk. Good data is, is in, in, in business of analyzing business data, data that's produced by customers, by customers' interactions, by social media, by uh, you know, uh, call centers, any, any data that's actually produced by company uh, when company sells and markets and delivers product. How big is that opportunity? Is it, is it something that every company needs in every function within the company? Absolutely. I, I think this is, this is the most exciting thing about uh, good data is that it's extremely horizontal, a horizontal solution. It's not only that it, it's needed by uh, every company. It's actually needed by every company for every function. So we have, you know, in every company we have multiple opportunities. It, it spans industry, so our solutions work with multiple industries, and, and it's also worked in multiple territories. So I get up and I have phone calls with customers in Europe. I, we sell for eight hours in US or 12 hours in US, and then we get on calls with our friends in Australia or Asia Pac. So it's the beauty of today's market is that the, the need for data analytics and big data is, is global need. And who do you compete with then? Are there who do you see all the time? Yeah, yeah. so, so, so what, <laughs> given how broken the space is, in most cases we see uh, uh, people and body, uh, bodies and, and Excel. 
people mm. actually. Really? Yeah, it's 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 all like every company. It's a great you, position to be in. It's, it's it's if you look at you know the last uh, 10, 15 years of analytics, companies literally spend tens of billions of dollars on analytics, and most companies are still data bankrupt. So if you speak to any manager, how do they get the data to make decisions? They will tell you, well, I have a bunch of analysts and they, they send me a spreadsheet every single day. And I know that there is some IT project that is supposed to deliver dashboards, but that's so behind and I don't see my data there and so on. So my biggest competitor is not a company or set of companies. It's, it's literally the approach and it's, it's bodies and, and Excel. And, and is there resistance to, to buying your product? Is, uh, or what's the resistance yeah, you have yeah. to overcome? Exactly. No, I, I think the biggest thing is that it's 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 a revolutionary uh, solution. So people don't know we exist, and uh, so the main uh, the main task for good data and our marketing team and so on is is, is dramatically increase our awareness. At the same time, um, sometimes people actually use good data and may, they may not even be aware of that. Um, half of our business is actually embedded analytics. We, uh, we actually power analytics of other SaaS companies. And I believe that that's actually, you know, wonderful business on its own. Uh, the fact that if you build a SaaS company, uh, imagine that number one request you will get from your customers is analytics. I'm spending money on your product. I need to know what's going on. Why am I spending this money? Am I getting any benefits? And analytics is usually very difficult for SaaS companies. And that's why we have a nice business of, of a very fast growing business, building analytics for other companies. That's great. So what about the big players, the Oracles and SAPs and IBMs? Do you compete with them or are they just more on the structured data side and they're, they're not in this business yet? Again, it's, 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 a, it's a big data segmentation. Analytics or, or data warehousing and analytics was always available for let's say Fortune 100, Fortune 500, maybe Fortune 1000 companies, and that is their market. So their market is the extreme top of the, of the, of the, of the uh, uh, pyramid. And in most cases, uh, they just, you know, they, they sell to IT. There is no real benefit out of their products. We usually say that, uh, you know, Teradata or SAP data warehouse is a place where data goes to die. And that's why people move to, people move to, uh, spreadsheets and, and, and Excel and so on. So I actually, I don't believe that we compete with them, at least not now. Obviously, in, in our vision is that one day we will be able to, to sell against Oracle and sell against SAP and sell against uh, uh, IBM. But at this moment, I'm, I'm happy kind of, you know, with the segmentation of the market where we, we sell to business people, to line of business, right. we sell to medium and, uh, you know, large, line of business of large companies. That's great. So when did you form? What year? It was it was late in two thousand and seven, just before the downturn. In it's the exactly. I actually I, I I started my money raising process for my Series A uh, the day Lehman Brothers went out of business. Oh, it was it was good good yeah. timing. Believe me, it was unbelievable. For nine months, n none of the VCs were able to tell me not only am I going to fund you, but do I have the money because they didn't know. It was right. all, the, the, the place was such a big mess. So, so I usually say that tough times breed tough companies. I actually believe that it made us better. The fact that the early days were so difficult to, to get any attention and, and so on. But by now we have an amazing product, we have amazing people, and, and I believe that it gave us a head start. So maybe your, one of the biggest challenges at the beginning was the enterprise companies were not in favor in the year 2007, 2008, and there was a downturn. What, what are the big challenges you face now? I, I actually, going back to what, you know, we had so many challenges when we started. Yeah. Uh, SaaS was so early. You know, every time I said, I want to analyze data in a cloud, people really didn't understand the concept. They did, nobody was able to understand why would anybody do anything in the cloud. Um, you know, uh, the whole cloud was so early in 2007, uh, Amazon just launched uh, AWS uh, EC2. So those were very early days. Um, the second challenge was that kind of the, the, the SaaS cash flow is inverted. I had to build, first build a product before I can actually go and sell it. So right. we actually had to raise money. So you needed money. even more capital. Exactly. We, I needed, we needed a lot of capital. And uh, so, so it, was, it, was, it was challenging. Um, at this moment, at, at this moment the, the, the challenges are more around um, the, the, the typical 
challenges of, of fast scaling companies, sales marketing. Do I have the right people deployed at the right time? Do they have enough leads? Did I hire the, 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 the sales leader for, um, you know, Southeast or whatever? It's, it, those are the challenges today. So you're in a scale mode. Exactly. Yeah. We are very much in a scale mode. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's terrific. You've, you've, you've also formed and successfully sold a couple of other companies. So you're a serial entrepreneur, which is a great thing in Silicon Valley. Um, what advice would you give to other entrepreneurs on how to start a company and how to get going? A couple of things. Um, the first one is that a startup is not a, a small version of IBM. It's not a company like a big company with the functions of big company, but smaller. I, I believe that startup is a, 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 a vehicle device designed to, to learn. When, you know, even today when I drive home, I'm trying to understand what did I learn today? What did I validate? Beyond, you know, every startup, when you work for IBM, you don't learn. You essentially execute, you, you, do what you, you do what you are told. At startup, you don't have that luxury. You always have to go back to the office in the morning and say, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to learn. I'm going to validate. That's on, on, uh, on one side. On, on the other side, starting multiple companies is, is difficult. And um, because you always assume that the next company will be the, like, better than the last one. And I will only, I will only fix the problems of the last company and, and now I will have a better company. And that's not my style. My style is when I start a new company, I essentially try to look at it almost like if I, if I never built anything before. Because the, the challenges and environment and people are all so different that it makes no sense to essentially use the success of, as the guidance. So I'm always very open-minded about what's ahead of me, and I usually start my companies with a different set of people. That's interesting. So, so a whole, a whole new, a whole exactly. new group. Yeah, the, the whole so new you don't group, have the, new, the history. I don't to have the be history. Burdened by exactly. It. I don't. I don't build in the same segments. I don't build. I don't sell to the same people. I don't build it. You know, my, my first company was a uh, leading Java development tool called called NetBeans that we sold to. Uh, Java developers, and it's now part of Oracle. My second company was called Systinet in the SOA space, and we sold to IT architects, very different space. It's now part of HP, and now I'm selling analytics to the business people. Yeah. Have you tried to develop uh, a specific culture within each of these companies, or ha has it been different in each company? Um, I think it's that the culture is probably more similar. We have yeah. very direct culture. It's uh, again, you know, in the, at a startup, the ease of communication and and um, used to have used to have a tagline when we started uh, Good Data. The tagline was that Good Data is BI minus BS, and that was our that was our culture. It was very much you know no BS culture, and and uh, I believe that that's kind of common to all of my companies. That's great. Well, this has been very helpful. Roman, and our audience appreciates it very much, and thank you, and good luck to good data. Excellent. Thank you. It's good to be here.